Hi everyone, I'm Grace and today I'm going to talk about um, my own artwork for a few minutes and then a female artist that I would like to introduce into classroom lessons. I studied my undergraduate degree at Lancaster University in fine art and I specialised in painting. Um, while there I learned as much as I possibly could about all kinds of media and explored how I could incorporate that into my own work. I started my degree straight from school and I used to create very detailed oil paintings which generally took weeks to finish. As a standard practice in any creative degree I was pushed and especially to expand my understanding of painting and my own ability to create work at an increased speed and rate. My main inspiration was fabric as it meant I could explore tone, shape, shadow, etc. Um, and it was something that really inspired me. Through depicting fabric, I could also explore themes such as the overlooked and the everyday, which is something that has also always inspired me, as I very much like to look at things that contain a lot of detail that maybe not everybody would notice. However, the more artists I looked at and the more research I did, my work started to become less representational and um, I really enjoyed focusing on having a concept and concept art. So my degree show work was a culmination of learning after three years and was also influenced by my dissertation, which looked at art in the post-medium condition, which basically focused on on how within contemporary artworks, the boundaries between what is considered a painting, a sculpture, an installation, etc., have become more blurred. And I was exploring whether, because I had manipulated the canvas, it had become a sculpture, and therefore whether I was hanging a sculpture on the wall, or if it was still a painting. I have also had um, a couple of paintings exhibited in a commercial gallery um, in Redcar in the northeast. And this was really interesting for me to see how my work was going to be displayed around other peoples of different mediums like photography, etc. I would now like to talk about some of the artists that influenced my own work during this time, primarily Alison Watt. Christo and Jean-Claude and Martin Creed. All of these are relatively contemporary artists, um, most of which are still alive, and all of which influence my practice in some way. Um, Alison Watt look, used fabric to um, explore the female body, whereas uh, Christo and Jean-Claude managed to conceal a whole coastline and other famous buildings things around the world in entirely in fabric and and I was really drawn to the way in which these artists had used um, fabric or paper in entirely different ways and it was very much the concept behind the work that really sort of um, linked these artists together for me personally. All of these artists are um, people who I would love to do individual lessons on. However, I'm now going to talk about the artist I chose for this micro lesson. The artist I've chosen to talk about is Dame Laura Knight, who I find to be a very influential female artist and who's someone who is often overlooked. So Laura Knight was born in 1877 to a working class family and grew up in Nottingham. At age 13, um, her painting talent was recognised and she was enrolled at the Nottingham School of Art, where she would meet future husband and fellow painter Harold Knight. Now, one of the reasons that I like to talk about Laura Knight is that she was the only woman to be given war commission during both world wars. She was awarded Dame of the British Empire in 1929. She was the first woman to be elected as a Royal Academy member in 1936. And she com continued painting until she died aged 93. One of Knight's earlier and more controversial, controversial pieces was her 1939 self-portrait with a nude model. Although she um, attended 
painting classes like her male counterparts, women were not allowed to partake in life drawing classes. Now this was important contextually, as during this time women were also campaigning for women's suffrage. And I think with this piece she wanted to show that she was not afraid to challenge the restrictions placed, in, placed on women, just like those women campaigning for the vote. Most of um, Knight's artwork um, was portraiture, and she favoured a figurative and realist style of painting, but often adapted her style depending on her subject. Now another reason she's important is um, she was very focused on painting marginalised groups and individuals from groups that were often sort of overlooked by society. So as I mentioned, Knight preferred to draw individuals from marginalised groups. Here are two black individuals and noticeably one is a child, again two individuals from marginalised groups and actually um, they were patients at a hospital. Now the second series of um, drawings and paintings I want to show is the circus series. Um, and I actually spent several months touring with a circus. And and I think that this was quite rare at the time, especially, especially for a woman as well. Um, to live amongst a marginalised group, a group that society maybe didn't deem as respectful as others. And I think the fact she showed the individual people shows that it was really the people behind the, the sort of um, show that she was interested in and that these are the people she wanted to represent and I think that's very important to notice. Now the third series is the Traveller series and these were again another group um, separated from normal society um, and with these I'd like to sh highlight that she really loved to paint people of all ages and she wasn't shied away from perhaps just drawing and personally people I really appreciate that she wanted to actually she get really to know loved the people to show, that she was studying like, the elderly she was lady, so the other gentleman, the younger girl and wanting um, to represent. Um, she was also given an extreme privilege of touring with the Ballet Russe and here same again sort of got to go behind the stage of the show, got to really see a the, more natural um, ballet dance, potentially even more vulnerable um, um, position than just showing them as these sort of beautiful on stage jan dancers. Um, she really did again, even show the people her behind the show paintings were very much on the individuals. They are still very beautiful paintings and they have a lot of depth to them. A lot so of for me, color. it's very important to point out that although she was um, making great strides for female artists and doing what she was doing, it's also very important to show that she was a very talented painter um, and really did create very beautiful paintings. So as well as depicting men and women from marginalised groups, um, she also depicted the roles women played during the Second World War. Um, she produced a series of paintings for the War Artists Advisory Committee and one of her most well-known paintings is Ruby Loftus screwing a breech ring. Um, and this was to highlight the strength of women and the way they and the way she took over this um, machinery that previously would have only been operated by men. Um, her achievements and talent were recognised and praised in the art world. Um, if her subjects were a little unusual. Um, a further accolade for her was when she was a war correspondent and artist at the Nuremberg Trials, where Nazi war criminals were convicted. Um, this painting is actually very huge. I saw it at a gallery. And this painting, the Nuremberg Trial, um, it's incredibly moving, and I think it's because she juxtaposed the destruction um, of the war with those who were being convicted. And I think the fact she changed her style from a less realist one um, and less representational to something that combined um, both the destruction and the people who caused it. And I think that compared to the previous paintings I showed, these are quite dark, muted um, paintings. You know, the colours aren't as vibrant. And I think that really then emulates that these marginalised groups of people that she was um, mixing with 
were very vibrant, creative, colourful people. And so overall, as mentioned previously, um, the reason I like to talk about Laura Knight is that she really did go against the restrictions placed on female artists at the time. And she wasn't afraid to paint who or what she was interested in. And so for future project ideas, I've included some um, other artists and uh, painters and photographers, such as Dorothea Lang, Cindy Sherman and Gerda Taro. All of these, all of these female photographers addressed um, different areas. For example, Dorothea Lang took photos during the Great Depression. Um, Cindy Sherman was a feminist artist who looked at the male gaze. And Gerda Taro actually um, died during the First World War, um, taking photographs. And I think that looking at these women um, would be a very interesting project which could also be extrapolated to current society. And I think that, you know, it's the 21st century, it's 2020, and there are still marginalised groups. And I think it'd be very interesting for um, pupils to maybe be able to identify those groups still and um, perhaps produce portraits or artworks that um, resonate with them and respond to that issue. Or perhaps could be a way to look at portraiture in general um, and maybe looking at someone that people know, for example, a grandparent and um, identifying how they could represent that person um, or someone that they know very well and what tools they may use to represent that person in a portrait. But primarily I did want to um, highlight some female artists who perhaps maybe don't get as enough recognition as they should and um, I hope everyone learned something from my presentation. Thank you for watching.